Hi. Here's your human design reading of your body graph and uh, human design chart. So here uh, are the nine centers labeled over here, but I will try to explain this. Um, you are a generator. This is because the red square is um, colored in and highlighted. That means uh, that they, that is your uh, authority. And that is your authority because to the right of it, the solar plexus is not colored in. If that was colored in and defined, it would trump the sacral center being your authority. So what does that mean? Uh, a generator is an energy being. 70% of the population are generators. An energy being means that you can work from morning until night um, and go to bed exhausted and rejuvenate overnight and wake up the next day fine. The point though is, or the distinction is, if you balk at that, um, because it may not feel like it's always true, is that you need to choose the correct things to be doing. So that means um, checking your sacral response. Probably the most important thing you're gonna learn from this is that your mind will give you quite a bit of information about what's right or not for you, but your body really knows better. And the way to check your body um, is through nonverbal responses. So, and actually it's best if you can get someone in your life to ask you what are called sacral questions because responding to the environment uh, gives you the best practice. And a sacral question is do you like chocolate uh-huh do you like vanilla uh-uh so you can't fake it those noises come from your body and really show you your passion or your disinterest or dislike for things so whenever an opportunity comes to you you respond to it in that way and then what you're going to do is have more discernment um, and not take on every project just because you can. You have an incredible amount of energy and you could be uh, overexpending it on the wrong things, in which case then you'll see that your theme is frustration. If you're working on a project that your body didn't co-sign through that sacral noise, then you're um, gonna either feel tired, which you shouldn't um, in a burnout way, or you're gonna feel frustrated that it's just not working out. Um, the, they say that the sacral is a magnet that attracts all kinds of possibilities. So you don't have to go out into the environment and try to um, get that from the environment. So the other thing is, as we look at all of your centers, we can assume that most people coming to human design and, and finding out about themselves are operating in what's called the not self. And that means a conditioned response. It isn't really the way that you're wired or designed, human design. Um, so with the sacral, you can be, um, you can also be aware that you're putting this energy outwards, that you are you have all this energy and other people who might have, if they're a projector or a manifester or in some kind of way not um, energy beings, they will get energized by you. So the not self really comes out in the sacral when you are um, initiating rather than responding. And if you are taking action on things that aren't right for you. All right. So then let's look at your other defined centers. So they would be the ones that are colored in. So we can move up your body to the G, which is the 
diamond that's colored in yellow for you. The G is also called the self. And it's the center for knowing your purpose, your direction, and feeling that you can access love in the world. So having that defined is a good um, source of stability for you. All of your defined centers are where you will have stability because you have a consistent manner of expressing the energy of the center. So um, you can be aware that you are pursuing your correct direction and love relationships when you're not overriding your G with your mind. So knowing in your body that those things are right and also using your strategy from your sacral. So if you're responding through your sacral, um, you will then have a consistent um, success about doing um, the correct projects, the correct direction, the correct uh, purpose in your life and relationships. Um, so then speaking of the mind, the other two centers that you have defined are the yellow uh, triangle at the very top or your crown, we call it the head, and the lime or electric green uh, triangle within your head at the um, third eye, essentially, the um, or what we call the brow in the other chakra system, which is your Ajna. So together that makes up your mind. And a defined uh, crown means that you have this, a um, stable and consistent way of receiving ins inspiration, uh, but you, it's also a pressure center. So here's one which always feels a little funny to me because it's defined, which would be more stable, but what it means is that you think a lot and you have a pressure to think and you're looking for answers and you actually can find them because you do have defined Ajna, but sometimes you will overwhelm yourself and this can be a source of anxiety. Um, you also emit inspiration to others from this defined center, especially people who have it, have the head open. And um, so you, um, there's only 30% of us, I have this defined as well, that have the defined head. And if you have a defined head, by definition, you will have a defined Ajna. You can have a defined Ajna without a defined head, but you can't have it the reverse. And that's because You'll see that your 64 and 47 connect and fill the channel, and that um, means that the head is always defined by being connected to the ashna, but the ashna could be defined by being connected to the throat, which is not the case for you, but it could be for someone else. So having a defined ashna is that you means that you have a stable and consistent way of thinking. Uh, processing your thoughts and you um, in both cases when we have definition it means we're influencing others but less open to the influence from others so just being aware that this definition of your head and ashna means that you do affect other people and you can even begin to be aware that you might be putting thoughts into other people's head if you're interacting with someone who you, def you discover has an open head and an open ashna, um, they have even given examples of the other person saying something and you realize you just thought it. So to be careful around the boundaries of that, something that I started to become aware of. So that's where you are defined and stable. And they're not connected because between those four centers is your throat. Um, you are then a split definition. You have um, two parts of your being, your mind and your body. And you would, um, you could become unified or connected by transits or by an, uh, interacting with another person who connected you um, 
They would need to actually have two planets. They'd probably need to have the one in the G and the 23 in the throat. Um, there may be another way, but I'll have to look and, and figure that out. So um, if you're interested, I am going to be doing a webinar on um, sorry for that little ding, on I'm going to have to cut this out. All right. I am going to be doing, if you're interested, I'm going to be doing a webinar on Sinistry 